Hello and welcome to our Monticello live stream today. Today we're joined by Bill Barker as Thomas Jefferson talking about surveying and the Jefferson Fry map. Please put any questions you have for Mr. Jefferson in the comments and let us know where you're joining from. Well, my friends, what a pleasure once again to gather with you here at, at El Monticello. I'm delighted indeed that Mrs. Boyer is with us and to receive your questions accordingly upon a subject in which I have always been uh, most fascinated and devoted. Uh, and that is the subject of map making uh, and surveying. You might say that I was born into it uh, as my father was so renowned uh, for both of those particular ventures. Uh, well, uh, you found me here beginning to look upon my, my father's uh, esteemed map. He, Colonel Peter Jefferson was well known for what has become known as the Fry Jefferson map. And uh, we'll learn more about this as your questions proceed. So without further commentary for me as introduction, uh, the floor is yours. Ms. Boy, what is our first question? How did you first come by learning the mathematics and art of surveying? Well, first and foremost, as I just recently inferred, it began with my father. Uh, my father, you know, what a pity. He, um, he was not, uh, well, shall we say, um, educated in the most lofty degree. However, he was eager after knowledge. He read much and improved himself. And I certainly understood that as he shared so much of the knowledge with which he acquainted himself uh, with me and our family. Uh, he was well known as a surveyor throughout all of the former colony of Virginia. So we would hear great tales of his survey expeditions. Uh, he would return to talk about what he had discovered out west. And this is again when we were all growing up at Shadwell House, uh, where I was born, but a short distance here from Monticello. So you may say my early interest in, in surveying was directly from my father. And though my father, not extensively schooled, was most adept at mathematics and, uh, and natural philosophy, so he would draw out his surveys for me when I was young. He would draw out the maps uh, that I became acquainted with when I was young. So it began with my father. And then further, of course, it was nurtured uh, with the opportunity myself to pursue an education. Uh, nurtured when I was a young boy at Tuckahoe Plantation, where I first went to school and learned uh, mathematics. Uh, nurtured further when I attended Maury, Reverend James Maury's Classical Academy, right here in Albemarle. And then the more so though my father was deceased, that monies in his estate allowed me to go to the Old Road College of William and Mary and there to be enrolled in the School of Mathematics and Natural Philosophy. And I dare say at the Old Royal College of William & Mary, uh, Dr. William Small was of further influence uh, in learning surveying and, uh, and map making. In fact, Dr. Small provided the licenses uh, for surveyors. I, I have one right here. Uh, not many people realize this, but you could not be formerly known as a surveyor more or less a county surveyor without this, most important, a surveyor's license. You could only receive it from the Old Royal College of William and Mary, and you might see down there uh, Dr. William Small's signature to validate uh, a surveyor's license. So it sounds like your father was mostly self-taught. Were most surveyors back then self-taught, or did they go to schools to learn it other than William and Mary? A very good question. Uh, it was about 50% of them self-taught, 50% of them to have the opportunity to be enrolled in, a, in an English grammar school or a Latin school, or for the eldest son in a family to have the opportunity to go to the Old Royal College of William and Mary. Uh, the advantage of being self-taught was to be taught by your father, to learn from him. So Though you were engaged in that yourself, you still had a teacher. Your father would be the teacher. Or if your father was indisposed, perhaps an uncle uh, or a good friend or an older brother, someone already schooled in the subject of mathematics and surveying. 
Uh, and then, of course, as I mentioned, the opportunity to go to school, uh, you would learn then from uh, your, your tutor. Uh, and remember, our tutors, our teachers, when we were growing up uh, in the old colony of Virginia, were usually ministers of the Church of England. So they themselves uh, had been well taught in mathematics and the elements of surveying. So what were some of your father's earliest surveying jobs? Well, I am delighted to, to have here, uh, well, as I mentioned, a part of my father's map, uh, known as the Fry Jefferson map. And uh, this, if you will, is the uh, eastern half uh, of the map of uh, Virginia that he and Colonel Joshua Fry drew up. And I cannot show you here distinctly any of father's uh, survey commissions because most of his surveys were actually commissioned to the West in Virginia. Now, happily indeed, we have uh, the other half of the Jefferson Fry map right here uh, showing you some of my father's accomplishments. And uh, very early on, 1746, uh, before my father and Colonel Fry were commissioned uh, to draw up a map, uh, my father was commissioned to survey the northwest boundary of the Fairfax uh, holding. That was the holdings of Thomas Lord Fairfax, upwards of about 100,000 acres, uh, incorporating all of the land to, well, in the northern neck. The northern neck to its, e its eastern reaches uh, was the Fairfax um, property. And where would that end to the west? Well, that had to be surveyed. And the survey was Father's Commission. And that was to survey the distance between the streams of the uh, Rappahannock River uh, and the northernmost streams, the western and northernmost streams of the Rapidan. Uh, to draw the line between those streams which emanated out of springs, which means that the commission, if you will, uh, had to find those northern or northwestern most springs. So they had to work your way through the woods, chop through, chop through the brambles, chop, chop through all of the briars to finally arrive there. And so Father surveyed that Fairfax line 75 miles through the wilderness and forest primeval of Northwest Virginia. Now then, further represented uh, on the Fry Jefferson map was the commission by the Royal Governor of Virginia, Robert Dinwiddie, uh, to my father and Colonel Fry to survey the eastern end of the Virginia-Carolina line, uh, that line that had been surveyed by Colonel William Byrd of Westover. And, and here it is. Here's the North Carolina-Virginia line. You can see that dotted line that runs along here uh, in the Fry-Jefferson map. And here is where Byrd's uh, survey ended, William Byrd's survey of the North Carolina-Virginia line. Father and Colonel Joshua Fry were commissioned, now imagine this, because these little squiggly lines represent uh, all of the mountain ranges of the Blue Ridge. They were commissioned to literally hack their way through all of the brambles and the briars, 90 miles, 90 miles, through the Blue Ridge Mountains from Peter King's plantation, that's where they started, Peter King's plantation, 90 miles all the way through to the western ranges of the Blue Ridge and the Holston River, as you can see this, the Holston River. This is one of the, uh, well, one of the um, great accomplishments that made uh, Father and Colonel Fry's map uh, so very well known to finally establish that boundary. And uh, then you may also know when you think of North Carolina, what did this further establish? I almost hesitate to inform you, perhaps many of you know, 3630. That's it. That boundary line 3630 out to the west, uh, along which were surveyed and eventually established so many new states to our nation and of course, I think you're familiar, I have certainly heard of the great disputation and the arguments and debates over whether a state admitted north of that 3630 or south. 
uh, would have its law dedicated to the enslavement of an individual. This began with William Byrd establishing the boundary between Virginia and North Carolina and then further extended by my father and Colonel Joshua Fry. So you've talked a bit about your father and Joshua Fry. Can you tell us how they met? I'm happy to say that as uh, you could only receive your surveyor's license through the Royal College of William and Mary, uh, that father met Colonel for Joshua Fry in Williamsburg because Colonel Fry held the chair of mathematics and natural philosophy at the old Royal College. He was well educated at Oxford in England and therefore quite proficient in, in mathematics and survey and natural philosophy. I keep repeating natural philosophy. That is the study of scientific investigation in all of its realms. Uh, it could mean geography, it could mean topography, it could mean geology, all of this. Quite necessary for a surveyor to understand uh, as he proceeds westward uh, through the wilderness or in any survey, no matter how it might be delineated. So that is where they met. And remember, too, in the old former capital of the colony of Virginia uh, was located the patent office. So after you had completed your surveys, then your surveys. Uh, were deposited in that patent office, meaning that it secured your patent, it secured your ownership, and also meaning that if you could not pay the balance of your particular patent and your survey, then it was open for sale. Then someone interested could place a caveat upon that survey, meaning they, this is a warning, someone's interested, pay up the balance or you will lose that land. My father made quite a uh, a lot of acquisition of land in that very method, and so did Colonel Fry. So they became acquainted there early on in, uh, in Williamsburg. So talking a little bit more about the map, because it was extremely important, um, how was this map better than some of the previous ones of Virginia? Oh, well, first and foremost, as I just made mention earlier, the map extended the known parts westward of Virginia. That was its first and foremost importance. This was so very important because one of the reasons why the map was commissioned, why my father and Colonel Fry were commissioned, was with the knowledge of the encroachment of the French. You know, by 1746, with the survey of the Fairfax line east of the Appalachians, there was already knowledge of the French coming down from the north. They are particularly down the Mississippi River, let alone coming up from the south, no less the Mississippi River. Where would that lead? And what might uh, our boundaries be to the west? So the importance of understanding the western lands in Virginia was relevant to providing not only protection and safety uh, to our western expansion, but also the quicker, more available uh, opportunity for land, to quickly acquire land, to uh, immediately have it surveyed, the ownership of that land uh, before the French uh, or any other nation uh, might claim it. Now, what was even more interesting about uh, Father and Colonel Fry's map was the precision of all of the waterways, all of the creeks and all of the rivulets, if you will, uh, springs, all that had been noted perhaps in private patents and private surveys now to be shared uh, in a full map. Of, uh, of the former colony of Virginia. Um, this is better understood, if you will, uh, with, the, uh, with the eastern half of the fried Jefferson map. Because as you can imagine, from the moment the Englishmen began to settle uh, outside of Jamestown, and here, where do we find Jamestown? Uh, it's right here, there it is. There's Jamestown, that as the Englishmen began to settle outside of Jamestown with the recognition that searching and searching for 10 years after they settled there, 1607, for gold or civil or whatever commodity they could use for trade, it was the land, the land that would be the most valuable for them. And so therefore, as they began to settle outside of Jamestown, south side of the James River, northern the most as well, particularly to the northern neck, there were an awful lot of private patents 
They were put together in this comprehensive map and to assert who were establishing the first patents of land, Father and Colonel Fry's map had on it the various plantations. Noting the various plantations. Uh, down here, the James uh, River, as we pointed out earlier, is Westover, of course, and then Shirley Plantation, uh, uh, Dungeness, where my grandfather Randolph uh, lived, uh, going all the way up, following the waterways, the James River to the, to the west, the Rivanna River that confludes into it. And though it is not here on this eastern half, it is certainly on the western half, Shadwell Plantation is noted, uh, where I was born and grew up. Uh, even Colonel Washington's plantation, Mount Vernon, is noted on this up the Potomac River. So this is something that made the map most valuable, was unique. The map also carried, again, this would be on the western half, the final survey of the southwest corner of the former colony of Pennsylvania. Remember how uncertain that was for so long in the midst of the arguments between former Governor William Penn uh, and the Calvert family? Well, that survey was settled. And here as well was settled uh, Delaware. Uh, the three former colonies, uh, uh, excuse me, three former counties that eventually made up the colony of Delaware were settled uh, in this survey. And the Pennsylvania line, the holdings of Colonel William Penn, were decided upon on this map. So here, to think that that uh, made this map the more valuable, to have those certainties of boundaries and the wagon roads, the great arteries of commerce and migration were noted on Father and Colonel Fry's map. The great wagon road from Philadelphia that ventured out by Lancaster, the wagon road down into the Shenandoah Valley, eventually all the way down into Hillsborough, North Carolina. Uh, were shown here on Father and Colonel Fry's map. Well, we have a question. You mentioned uh, Mount Vernon and George Washington. Lily wonders if you talked to George Washington ever about surveying since he was a skilled surveyor. Oh, my, my, Lillian, without a question, the former Major Washington and myself, when I was a young boy, uh, had conversations. You know, Major Washington was a good friend of my father. They often uh, discovered one and the other on survey commissions uh, out west. And furthermore, Lillian, do you know, uh, I spoke about the patent office in Williamsburg. Uh, I discovered when I was a young man, attending the Old Royal College in Williamsburg, that one of Major Washington's land patents was still available for purchase. Actually, there was no caveat upon, upon it. You did not have to. Uh, it was 150 acres in what is now known as Rock Bridge County, Western Virginia, that included the great Rock Bridge itself, known by everyone today as Natural Bridge. It was available for two pounds six. And so I had the opportunity to purchase uh, and own the Natural Bridge. You cannot farm it, so that is perhaps one of the reasons why the patent lay dormant. Well, you can imagine when I inspected my holdings at Natural Bridge, I discovered that Major Washington had cut his initials right there on the inside of the bridge, GW. So the next time I saw him in Williamsburg, I let him know that he had defaced my private property. We became good friends, particularly upon the subject of surveying. And uh, yes, he was quite successful in his surveys. He was quite devoted to the surveys of the various fields of his farms, as have I been. And the, the Colonel, eventually Colonel, uh, George Washington became far more lucrative in his uh, vocation, you may say, of serving than I have been. I was licensed to survey. I received my license, yes, indeed, from the Old Royal College of Women and Mary. And I surveyed, you may say, officially for only one year. But I have been devoted to the art and have continued to pursue that in my own delight to survey. Um, perhaps mostly in honor of my father, but also in honor of mathematics, a subject we can depend upon. It does not leave us with theories. It does not leave us with inconsistencies. It's a certainty. And General Washington understood that as well. 
Well, Bridget has a question for you, and she asks if the map making techniques you learned from your father were used by Lewis and Clark on their expedition. Bridget, I could not think of a more worthy question relevant to the continual evolution of surveying. Uh, absolutely, what I'd learned from my father, what I'd learned from uh, General Washington, what I'd learned from Colonel Joshua Fry, what I learned from Christopher Geist, from, uh, from Colonel Woods, all of the surveyors well known throughout Virginia who were county surveyors. That means that they were licensed to officially represent uh, the extensive survey throughout a, a county itself. Uh, was very influential in my commission to uh, Captain Meriwether Lewis and Lieutenant uh, William Clark. Uh, in my commission, in my instructions that they make surveys as they followed up uh, the Great Missouri River and discovered terra incognita unknown land that they could now chart for a more efficient uh, migration and, uh, and, if you will, settlement up that river and lands and streams and tributaries connected to it. I wish I had uh, Lieutenant Clark's map with me. It was an extraordinary map that he drew up uh, of the Missouri River and all of its confluences. It is available. I hope you will have an opportunity to, uh, to see it, uh, if not, but a copy of it and acquaint yourself with that remarkable achievement uh, in charting that course to the West. Coincidentally, Bridget, it might be of interest, in, interest to you, and I know this will perhaps be startling to many. Do you know when I was a young boy that my father's good friend, uh, Dr. Thomas Walker of Castle Hill, uh, he who is renowned for having first observed the great gap uh, the Cumberland Gap, and then helping to form the Transylvania Company uh, for the settlement of lands to the West. Dr. Walker, my father, uh, Dr. George Gelmer, Dr. George Harvey, Bernard Moore, all of the first three or four settlers out here in the wilderness, having surveyed their land and patented their land, had an idea to survey the Missouri River, to actually commission a surveying uh, voyage up the Missouri to see where its headwaters might end. Even then, in those 1740s, they were concerned about the further encroachment of the, the Spaniards, let alone the French. So yes, even years before Captain Lewis and Lieutenant Clark journeyed up the Missouri and, uh, and brought back with them a, a most perfect survey that had been an interest to surveyors to venture in kind. We had one other question from a viewer. This was Lily again. Did you and your father survey Monticello after your father purchased it? I do not recall my father and I having the opportunity to work together to survey uh, El Monticello, but I certainly have. Uh, I set out at a very young age, particularly after father passed away, to have a more accurate survey of all my inheritances. I was the eldest son. Uh, then that would fall upon me to inherit all of his holdings. He was a freeholder. He owned outright all of his property. And, and as you well know, uh, all of the families who were enslaved upon it. And so I set about to survey the five farms that he owned uh, and I inherited. Uh, Shadwell, of course, uh, contiguous to it to the, to the west, a Lego farm, uh, just beyond it to the east, Pantops, and then across the Rivanna, Tufton, and then Monticello. So yes, and I have continued it as I've made further acquisitions, Mount Alto, for instance, uh, surveys. And then there were other farms, not contiguous to the immediate five farms I mentioned, uh, throughout Albemarle County and to the south, Bedford County, when I inherited lands of my father-in-law that I, as well, went to survey. So can you talk a little bit about surveying you've done? So have you yourself ever published your own surveys or just tell us a little more? No, I, I have not published my surveys. I have published Father's Map uh, when I had published privately uh, notes on the state of Virginia. I included uh, in that publication what nearly 250 uh, of those notes to be published and to which I handed out personally uh, to gentlemen of scientific curiosity, I included within a French version of the Fry Jefferson map. Now, you ask, uh, what are the rudiments or the elementary 
attentions of a surveyor. Well, first and foremost, let me show you here, I happen to have gathered, uh, well, some of the survey equipment that belonged to my father that I've been honored to inherit. Uh, first and foremost would be a three-legged staff. Uh, that, of course, to provide you a sturdy uh, foundation on the ground by which you would place your surveyor's compass. Now, remember, you are hacking your way through the wilderness, through the forest primeval, and to find a level area of land will, is almost an impossibility uh, to there. A set sturdily uh, a three-legged staff. So often a surveyor brought with them uh, the Jacob's staff. That is what this is called. It's a Jacob's staff. It has, as you can see, uh, a very uh, pointed mental, metal uh, end to it so you can secure that deep within the ground and then you place your surveyor's compass upon this. Now, the surveyor's compass, of course, is the whole point to the matter of survey. And here it is. I'm happy to show you this beautiful uh, surveyor's compass uh, here, as my father would have known, Colonel Joshua Fry would have known, uh, Christopher Geist, of course, uh, Colonel Woods, all the well-known surveyors, Captain Meriwether Lewis, Lieutenant Clark, a beautiful surveyor's compass there, which you set up uh, on your Jacob staff, uh, or your three-legged staff there, and uh, set it, of course, north-south, uh, so that you also have then interceding east-west, and with the degrees, then you begin your survey. Now, how do you begin? Because you use what is known as a Gunda's chain. A Gunda chain is named because it was invented by an Edmund Gunda in 1620. Now, remember, we talked about uh, many feeling the more comfortable to move out of Jamestown, to begin to settle up river on the James River, and to begin to stake their claim. Well, this is uh, invented at about that time, not <laughs> may have been invented specifically for settlement in North America, uh, but it is a chain 66 feet long, and every link is about seven and one quarter inches long. So you consider this to be secured firstly uh, at the very base of either your Jacob staff or your three leg staff, and that is secured with a stake, just simply a wooden stake or a metal one that you would bring along with you. It is secured right at the plumb point. You would have dangling from your staff a, a plum, lead plum, which of course marks the decided point uh, in the middle of that three-legged staff. And the same, of course, for the Jacob staff. You would hook that right there on one of those uh, um, stakes, and then you would proceed to someone walking directly as you choose to define uh, the lines of your survey. And they continue this on, continue this on, and about every, uh, um, oh, several uh, links of the chain, you would put into the ground a staff to mark your point. Then you would consider further and then move farther uh, what needs to be surveyed. So the Gunter's chain was very, very necessary uh, in your survey. Now, as you are jotting down, uh, all of what you're surveying, you enter it right here in your entry book. That is exactly what this is, an entry book. You enter all of your surveys, so you have them right there, all drawn up. And then after you have drawn that up, you proceed. Where did I put it here? My most necessary. Here it is. Then you would sit down with your compass and your protractor, and you would proceed then to follow through what you had surveyed on the ground onto paper. And you would discover then that every 10 chain square, 10 chain square will encompass an acre. And so that is what you do then to, uh, to have that all lined up on your, your drawing, your plat as it would be to deposit in the public records office building in Williamsburg. Now, there's one thing more. Uh, remember how I have said 
You are continually hacking your way through the wilderness, through the forest primeval, through brambles and briars. A hatchet. A hatchet is the great companion to a surveyor and his team. Uh, is it not remarkable to think that surveyors were of necessity with this as the Native Americans already had had the hatchets hewn out of stone uh, from time immemorial. So these are some of the elements. Uh, your satchel, of course, uh, is very much a part uh, of the survey as well. Well, Bridget asks, what about a theodolite? Bridget, you are far advanced in the elements of survey, as uh, I certainly want it to be. The reason is because um, a survey compass allows you but a level transit, uh, if you will, to your survey upon level ground. Though it's not level. We all know that. We talk about the vagaries of topography and terrain. So you'll be going up hills, you'll be going down hills, you'll have to go down a ravine across a stream or a river. How do you proceed to calculate heights? Heights. And so it is the theodolite, the remarkable invention of a theodolite that allows you affixed to either your three-legged staff or as well your Jacob's staff uh, to allow you then uh, that idea of altitude. Uh, nonetheless, with your protractor there to allow for the degrees to signify uh, the altitude one way or another. Well, I think we've got time for one more question and let's have you looking to the future. Will surveying continue to be necessary and valued in the future? What a wonderful question indeed. Well, consider as we've met uh, by me, uh, taking great pride to exhibit my father's uh, map that he made up with Colonel Joshua Fry to think how of influence this was uh, to the particular map uh, here right behind me, which is known as the Mitchell map. This was drawn up by James Mitchell. This had taken into account all of the most accomplished and precise maps that were known of all of the former colonies in British North America. And Mr. Mitchell, a Virginian, coincidentally, then resident in London, and I will not deny referring to many a French map, uh, drew up this great map of North America. Look, father's map uh, focused right into Virginia, but here's Virginia all the way down south here uh, where you have the Chesapeake Bay. And look at all of the precision of the waterways, uh, boundary lines. We have the Great Lakes up in here. We have far west out to the land of the Miamis and the Autos and the Sioux and, and the like, all the way down into, if you will, uh, South Carolina and Georgia, just shy. You can see all the way down in the bottom, I don't know whether you can, Florida and Mexico uh, down there. So where does this take us into the future? It's limitless. It continues. Uh, we look up into the celestial bodies and realize what yet needs to be surveyed. What about, if you will, the, the great oceans? Uh, do we decide to, to chart and survey the beds of the oceans? Do you know that beginning my second administration as the Chief Magistrate of our nation, uh, I actually commissioned a Swiss gentleman, uh, a very good friend of my Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, my Secretary was Albert Gallatin. This gentleman was Ferdinand Hassler, H-A-S-S-S. L-E-R. And I commissioned this eminent Swiss mathematician to chart our coastlines, survey our coastlines. Very, very useful, is it not? Not only for a more efficient habitation and commerce, for protection, safety, and defense. To know every inlet, every mouth of a river is necessary for defense. Imagine how this will proceed westward. Imagine how we can bring, indeed, this continent of America closer together in a better understanding of its terrain, its topography, its access to waterways and the like. And then think of what a great advantage it is to continue that across the globe. What would bring a people, the family man, closer together than a better understanding of how we might chart land and how we might note uh, those areas that are most useful in its resources or for settlement. 
I think it is unlimited. Someone mentioned to me the other day, Mr. Jefferson, what would you think of the mathematics and the art of GPS? I said, well, please sit down and enlighten me to this. It may support what I have always said. I enjoy much more the dreams of our future, better than the history of our past. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Jefferson. On that note, we're going to end our live stream. Join us next week for another live stream at Monticello. And thank you again. Good day.